Today, we're going to learn about the Java ecosystem and how Java works under the hood. And you're finally going to understand what all of these words mean. When I first started learning Java, I was bombarded with a number of words and acronyms that all sounded kind of the same. You would have heard of JDK, JRE, JVM, and so on. But what do these all mean? This can often be intimidating for beginners. And so we just end up skipping all of that and going straight to an IDE. Like here, let's take a look at Eclipse, which is one of the most popular Java IDEs out there. If I wanted to run a simple Hello World app, I would just put in some code that looks like this in a new app class. And now if I run it, we can see that the output is shown over here. So this is great, but what exactly is happening under the hood? There are actually a number of steps that happen in between us writing the code and seeing the final output on the screen. And these steps are all hidden from us, but I feel it's very important to understand. To be honest, you can build a large production grade application using Eclipse like we did here. But knowing about the internals of how Java runs your code will help make you a better Java developer and make better applications for your users. So in this video, we're going to see what exactly happens when you run some Java code. Now, because we want to understand the basics, the tools that we're going to use are also going to be super basic. So for this video, I'm only going to use the terminal and a simple text editor. So when you first install Java on your machine, it comes bundled with a bunch of commands that you can use. For example, Java C, Java P, and the Java command. We'll be using these commands throughout this video. Now let's start with the most basic building block of your Java application, which is bytecode. So the first thing that you should know is that all the code that you write in Java eventually gets compiled into bytecode. Bytecode is similar to binary or machine code, but unlike machine code, it can't be executed directly by the CPU. Instead, it needs to be interpreted by a special program called the Java Virtual Machine. So it's the Java Virtual Machine that actually runs on your CPU and all the bytecode that your Java code compiles to runs on the Java Virtual Machine. This might seem unnecessary at first, but it's actually because of this in-between layer that you can be sure that any Java code that you write will run on any machine that the Java Virtual Machine supports. So whether you have a Linux system, a Mac, or even a Windows system, as long as the JVM is running on it, your Java code will run. And because the JVM has been in development for so long, it has good support for almost all operating systems. So to actually see this bytecode in action, let's create a simple Java program and compile it. So to keep things simple, let's run everything from our terminal. Let me just create a sample directory here called com.sohamkamani. And within this directory, we can create a file called hello world.java. Now let's add a basic Java program. I'm sure you would have seen a program like this many times and it just prints hello world to the console. So to compile this code, we can use the Java C command line tool that gets installed along with the Java development kit. This will generate a new file called hello world.class in the same directory, which contains the bytecode for our program. We can actually even see the bytecode for ourselves using the Java P command. Now bytecode is not supposed to be human readable. So don't worry if you don't understand what's going on here. The important thing to note is that this is the low level code that will be executed by the Java virtual machine. But since this program is so simple, you can kind of tell what part of the bytecode corresponds to what part of the original code. Like you can see the class definition over here and the main method definition over here. And I'm guessing since this is the class that has the main method, this part over here instantiates a new instance of this class to run. But let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Now, if we actually want to run this code, we can use the Java command. To do this, we'll first have to go to the root directory, which is the directory before the com slash soham kamani directory. From here, we can run the Java command along with the full name of our class, which in this case is com.sohamkamani.hello world. So now Java will look inside the com slash sohamkamani directory for the hello world.class file and run the bytecode within that file. In our case, this would be the familiar hello world output. Now let's talk about the JRE 
और जावा रन टाइम एनवायरमेंट एंड द जेडीके और जावा डेवलपमेंट किट वी एक्चुअली यूज बोथ ऑफ दीज व्हेन वी रैन दिस कोड जस्ट नाउ एंड दे बोथ प्ले अ क्रूशियल रोल व्हेन रनिंग एंड डेवलपिंग जावा प्रोग्राम्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द जावा रन टाइम एनवायरमेंट फर्स्ट लेट्स फोकस ऑन वन लाइन फ्रॉम आर प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल the system dot out dot print line function was used to print hello world into the console and if you've used java for some time i'm sure you would have used it quite a lot but if you think about it we never really defined this function anywhere in our code so where does it come from so the answer to that is that it's part of the java runtime environment the jre is a collection of libraries and components that are responsible for making sure that your java code executes efficiently Note that the JRE also includes the JVM. So when you install the JRE on your machine, you will also get the JVM along with it. Other than the Java virtual machine, the JRE also includes many of the libraries that we use in our day-to-day -day Java code, including the system library that we used in our example. Other libraries like java.lang, java.util, java.swing and several others are used for different purposes like data structures user interfaces and interaction with the operating system the jre also contains the garbage collector which is responsible for cleaning up memory within a running java program and the class loader which is responsible for actually loading all the classes including the hello world class in our example into the java virtual machine so while the jvm here can be thought of as just an interpreter that reads instructions and executes them in the native operating system the program life cycle itself like scheduling memory management and security is all handled by the jre now while the jre is sufficient to run your java code it doesn't include the tools that you need to develop java code for that you'll need the java development kit or the jdk taking our previous example The Java C command that we used to compile our code is part of the JDK. The JDK also includes a number of other tools that you can use to develop Java code like the Java doc command for generating documentation or the jshell command for running Java code interactively. The JDK also includes the JRE. So when you install the JDK on your machine, you'll also get the JRE and in turn the JVM. So now let's put everything together and recap how the JDK, JRE and JVM work together to run our code. First, we can see the directory structure of our project. You'll often see this directory structure in Java projects. The source directory contains the source code for our project and the hello world.java file contains the code that we saw earlier. When working with Java, the package name of your class has to match the directory structure of your project. So in this case the package name of our class is com.sohamkamani which means that the hello world.java file should be located in the com/sohamkamani directory when we ran the java c command the jdk compiled our code into bytecode and saved it into a file called hello world.class when we ran the java command the jvm loaded the bytecode from the hello world.class file and executed it so that about wraps it up for this video I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.